Happy Monday, everybody. My name is Brandon Rose, and welcome to episode 282 of the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. Every Monday, this podcast covers new game releases, the previous week's gaming news, and we all are in an Xbox-related fun fact together. This show is on YouTube and podcast services around the world, so please subscribe in your favor and leave a review. Xboxin10.com, no numbers, is your quick source for links to all of our podcast destinations and social media profiles, which can follow at Xboxin10. To start, let's talk game releases. There were no big games out last week, but the games coming out this week include Speed Alama, Fay Farm, Beard the Spotlight, Kong Survival Instinct, Heroin Anthem 02, Scale Scars Oath, Potionomics Masterwork Edition, Wildermyth Console Edition, Bard's Gold, DC Universe Online, Say Cheese, Hidden Cats and Spooky Town, Super XYX, The Jackbox Survey Scramble, Tiny Little Farm, While We Wait Here, Card and Kale, Date Everything, Orange Season, Flint, Treasure of Oblivion, Puppet House, Slay the Princess, The Pristine Cut, Stilt Fella, Soul Stalker, Telebit, The Bridge Curse 2, The Extraction, The Smurfs, Dreams, Barbie Project Friendship, Boom Robots, Cute Bite, Miraculous Paris Under Siege, Outbreak Shades of Horror Chromatic Split, Rogue Flight, Paper Plane Arena, The Haunted House, Sonic Cross Shadow Generations, the Coma 2B Catacomb, and of course, Call of Duty Black Ops 6. There are some games you can now play and or are coming soon to Game Pass, and they include the following. You can now play South Park The Fractured But Whole on Cloud Console and PC, Donut County Cloud Console and PC, MechWarrior 5 Clans Cloud PC and Xbox Series X and S. Then on October 25th, you can play Call of Duty Black Ops 6 on Cloud Console and PC. Big, big, big day as well as Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 on cloud and Call of Duty Warzone on cloud. Then October 29th, you can play Ashen Cloud Console on PC. October 31st, Dead Island 2 on PC. November 5th, you can play StarCraft Remastered on PC and StarCraft 2 Campaign Collection PC. Down to last week's biggest news stories, and we have four to cover this week. Number one, Xbox Partner Preview October 2024, all reveals and Game Pass announcements. Tom West at True Achievements writes, Microsoft gave us another glimpse at Xbox's future games lineup this week with the Xbox Partner Preview Show, which saw puzzle platforming Metrovania Animal Well Shadow Drop on Xbox, announcements for upcoming Game Pass games, and more. In case you missed anything, we've put together an Xbox Partner Preview October 2024 roundup so you can catch up with the excitement. Animal Well Shadow dropped on Xbox Series X and S with a weird achievement list. Dimly lit first person shooter Blindfire launched into Xbox Game Preview for console and PC. Third-person action game Eden Zero was announced for Series X and S and PC. Kinetic Games dropped Phasmophobia's release date and will be able to play the popular horror game this month. Boober Team's next survival horror game, Kronos The New Dawn, was announced for Series X and S and PC. Fantasy action adventure game Eternal Strands was announced for Xbox Game Pass. We got another look at Wuchong Fallen Feathers via a fresh gameplay trailer. Control co-op shooter spin-off games FBC Firebreak was announced for Xbox Game Pass. Midwest Games announced The Legend of Baboo, an action-adventure game coming to Series X and S in 2025. Remedy Entertainment announced Alan Wake's 2's The Lake House DLC release date. Sega announced Like a Dragon, Pirate Yakuza, and Hawaii will launch sooner than expected. Third-person PvPvE Extraction RPG Mistfall Hunter was announced for Series X and S and PC. Unknown Worlds announced Subnautica 2 for Xbox Game Pass. Ghost Bike was delayed into 2025 and renamed to Wheel World. Cartoon Old School FPS Mouse PI for Hire was announced for Series X and S. And while not shown during the show, turn-based RPG Claire Obscure Expedition 33 has been given a spring 2025 release window. I mean, overall, not a bad show, right? Getting Animal Well Shadow Dropped is a big one as that game has been huge in the indie community. Then we also got a big showing from Remedy in the Control Co-op spin-off shooter FBC Firebreak, as well as the Alan Wake 2 The Lake House DLC release date. Boober Team hot in the map right now for a game we cannot play on Xbox platforms in Silent Hill 2 Remake, but showing off Kronos the New Dawn has been a win for them as well. Excited for more, I do like that they do these, I wish they just had a bit more pop. Number 2, Call of Duty 2025 reportedly a Black Ops 2 sequel set around 2030. Was the in pool at IGN writes? The Call of Duty series looks set to take players back to the future in 2025 with a Black Ops 2 sequel set in the early 2030s. Fans were alerted to leaked information about next year's unannounced Call of Duty game after details allegedly revealed in a focus group meeting hit social media. Some of these details were then corroborated by Insider Gaming. Activision declined to comment when contacted by IGN. 
Well, 2024's Black Ops Sit is set in the 90s to the backdrop of the Gulf War. 2025 Black Ops game reportedly shoots forward to the 2030s, picking up where 2012 Black Ops 2 set and 2025 left off. It reportedly continues the Black Ops storyline from that point, with David Mason from Black Ops 2 as the protagonist. Mechanics from Black Ops 6 said to return include the new body shield and omni movement, with some tweaks such as human shields with grenades stuck to them that can be thrown at enemies, and wall jumping. Zombies mode, meanwhile, is said to introduce an 8 player mode. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Infinity Ward is reportedly hard at work on the next Modern Warfare game, presumably Modern Warfare 4. Perhaps that's due out in 2026. The Feral Patriarch has had four years to work on Black Ops 6, the longest development period of a mainline Call of Duty game yet. Expectations are high then after 2023's Modern Warfare 3, which is perhaps the most poorly received campaign in Call of Duty history. Let me read that sentence again so you guys can keep track because I know it's that easy. While 2024's Black Ops 6 is set in the 90s to the backdrop of the Gulf War, 2025's Black Ops game reportedly shoots forward to the 2030s, picking up where 2012 Black Ops 2 set in 2025 left off. Yeah. Don't really know what to say about that, but it does seem like they're bringing some of the features that everyone is so far enjoying as of the Alpha and Beta with Black Ops 6 and Omni Movement and the Body Shield going forward into the next game, so we'll see, but that is a ways off. Number 3. Halo Infinite's cancelled Battle Royale mode could have been a game changer, says Dev. Heidi Nicholas at True Achievements writes, We could perhaps have seen a few additions to the Halo Infinite achievements, as a former Certain Affinity dev has confirmed that a Battle Royale mode was once in development. According to Certain Affinity's former design director Mike Kloper, the cancelled Halo Infinite Battle Royale mode could have been a game changer. There have been rumors about a potential Halo Infinite Battle Royale mode for quite some time. Klopper posted on LinkedIn as spotted by VGC, where he recently announced a new role as studio design director at Raven Software to say, quote, I led a large team of designers working on a cancelled Battle Royale mode for Halo. I believe this product could have been a game changer for the franchise. We loved playing it and working on it, and it was a fantastic experience in spite of its cancellation, end quote. Klopper spent over 15 years in various roles at Certain Affinity, a studio which has historically contributed to the Halo games. The franchise is soon to undergo some major changes. Firstly, 343 Industries has revealed that multiple Halo games are in development, and that it's rebranding to Halo Studios as a mark of a new dawn for the series as they switch to Unreal Engine 5. On top of that, Halo Infinite is getting a third-person mode in November. Oh, what could have been. For one of the worst kept secrets of the industry in the last five years or so, and it is really sad to hear that we're never going to see the light of day. 343 couldn't keep an intriguing and consistent battle pass in seasons with Halo Infinite, so how are they possibly going to support a battle royale mode? This was just not planned outright from the beginning, and it's such a shame because I still have faith that Halo could have an excellent, excellent battle royale given how the gameplay is, the vehicles, the people, the pickups. There is something there, and I hope we do see it in this next generation of Halo that is coming. And number four, Rare Boss to become new head of Xbox Game Studios. Ben Carey at Pure Xbox writes, Rare boss Craig Duncan is set to become the new leader over at Xbox Game Studios with current Xbox Game Studio head Alan Hartman set to retire per GameIndustry.biz. Hartman only took on the role in 2023 after leading Forza developer Turn 10 for a number of years. Duncan will go down a similar route after heading up the Sea of Thieves studio for over 10 years in Twycross, England. Here's how Xbox's Matt Booty described Duncan's new role. Quote, in his new role, Craig will continue to focus on helping our studios deliver high-quality, differentiated game experiences that can grow into successful franchises and reach more players by investing in new IP, end quote. This is a big job over at Team Green. It's a role that boss Phil Spencer once took on before graduating to head of Xbox and eventually CEO of Microsoft Gaming. We all want to see more Xbox Game Studios thrive, and we wish Duncan and his team the best of luck leading them forward. Sea of Thieves, a game when it first came out, did anyone really think that it would be a game that is still consistently played by millions of people all this years later? Craig Duncan, as far as I can see, has had a good reputation across the industry, so this seems like good news for Xbox and the game studios. As always, we end our show with a fun fact about Xbox, and since we're talking about Rare, let's do a little history lesson on the company. Credit to Wikipedia. Rare Limited is a British video game developer and studio of Xbox Game Studios, based in Twycross, England. Rare's games span the platform, first-person shooter, action-adventure, fighting, and racing genres. Its most popular games include the Battletoads, Donkey Kong, and Banjo-Kazooie series, as well as games like GoldenEye 007 in 1997, Perfect Dark in 2000, Conker's Bad Fur Day in 2001, Viva Pinata in 2006, and Sea of Thieves in 2018. Tim and Chris Stamper, who also founded Ultimate Play the Game, established Rare in 1985. 
How many of you people playing games nowadays know that Rare was purchased by Microsoft from Nintendo? Yes, back in 2002. What a crazy time to think that all of those games, especially for me from the N64, which are just iconic, GoldenEye, Perfect Dark, Blast, just so many games, all credit to Rare, who is now a Microsoft first-party Xbox game studio. Thank you all for listening to the Xbox and Sun podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. If you like the show, please subscribe to your favorite podcast service, share with your friends, leave a review, and follow on all social media at Xbox and 10. This past week, with what little time I had to play games, I mostly played Marvel Snap on my phone, as always, and then a little bit of Marvel's Midnight Suns. My friends came over, and we played Call of Duty Warzone for about 10 hours in one weekend, and while it was fun, it was infuriating, but good times all the way around. My name is Brandon Rose. You can follow me on Xbox at Rose93. Hope you all have a great week. Stay safe and keep on gaming.